It's international break and because there's no football, we've seen nine games so far this season. We've decided to reevaluate our predictions from the beginning of the season where we took every club and we ranked them first to 24th about where we thought they were going to finish this season. There is some humble pie to eat right now and with me to devour this humble pie is my co-host. He's licking his lips. It's Mark <laughs> Ryman. I'm doubling down. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not apologising to anyone. <laughs> no, yeah. Well, he's, it's funny, isn't it? I mean, the Championship is the most unpredictable league in the world. But it feels like this season has just been completely mental from the first nine games. Uh, teams that you thought were going to do well, including our own, have just not turned up. And other teams have absolutely been smashing it. It's, it's really been... A toughie, a real yeah. toughie, and some of the results just wow. And we've had so many managers already depart. It's just everything, everything change, everything change. It's mad. It's absolutely mm. crazy. And I, I actually watched back our previous one. It's so funny. We're all looted up and. <laughs> not anymore <laughs> yeah not anymore no hide, it. hide the fact no. that we're losing fans no well, no that's not the reason it's not the reason honestly <laughs> yeah we're not embarrassed promise no. <laughs> we'll see how we feel oh, after but, saturday yeah oh god don't, don't remind me, don't remind me. <laughs> we've got we got the review show the preview show yeah. i'm not looking forward to it at all well exactly. but before we dive in to these championship predictions remember to like this video and subscribe for even more championship content but let's dive in shall we so who have you got propping up the table now yeah, so originally I had Blackburn, um, and I, I did already uh, sort of hold my hands up with this one. I didn't really take John Eustace into enough of account, but also um, just the the ability to find a goal scorer despite Smodic's going has been excellent. I, I don't think they'll finish quite as high as they, they are now, um, but at the bottom of the table, on the other end of that, I've got Cardiff. I, I, I know they had a good result in the last week. I'm, I'm not going to get too overexcited about that. They, they've been very poor both ends of the pitch and a fair bit in the middle as well. Um, they, they look all over the place and they, you know, they're going to struggle to find someone to, to, to really pull them out of it, I think. I'm right there with you. I've got Cardiff in 24th place as well. So I, mm. I previously had them 20th. I thought they were going to struggle. Uh, you, however, I <laughs> think... What you had them something crazy, like I eighth? did add them. T I had them tenth. What's the opposite oh. of an apology? Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> mm. Yeah, so oh. yeah, I had them tenth. Yeah, terrible prediction. It looks bad. Still nine games in, but then finishing tenth, there'd be some long odds on that now. Yeah, look, it's it's fair because Errol Balot, he had them hard to beat. Yeah. They weren't scoring many goals. Like, look, they've got Callum Robinson as their main striker and they're relying on Aaron Ramsey, who he's got to mm. be 34, 35. There's no football left in those legs. He's doing it just because he loves Cardiff at this point. Yeah. And, yeah, and Balot's got the bullet. So, yeah, they're, they're struggling. Omar Rizzo, like, what, where do they go? I heard maybe Claude McAlealy will be in. Yeah, I've heard lots of rumours. There's a few, aren't there? I think Nathan Jones was doing the round earlier on. I think um, just <laughs> anyone, I think they'd get in to take in. But you're right, though. I mean, Bullock did a great job with them second half of the season. They, he still had problems. There was some rumours that, that some players weren't on board. And I did say, I think at the time, that I was pinning a lot of that on, on Chris Willock finding some form, um, which he has yet to do. Um, and I think there's a lot of players like that in their side that that, that have been players but but uh, are struggling to find that form again and defensively all over the place. They've already changed their goalkeeper. Ethan Horvath is no longer their number one by the looks of things. So, you know, that, that says everything really, doesn't it? Yeah, well, you know my thoughts on Ethan Horvath. I, I knew he was never the one, was he? Uh... <laughs> no, but I think... <laughs> I thought he would be better than than what he has. I agree with you. He was never a keeper that we I think we should have signed in the Premier League. 
However, I thought I thought he could do a job for Cardiff, and I think he's 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 struggled to do that. He has indeed. Uh, interestingly, Chris Woolock, he started four games, but you know, just been mm-hmm. off the bench for the last couple. What a weird one! No Chris Woolock magic incoming, but let's go to twenty third. Who you got? <sighs> Yeah, it kind of breaks my heart to put this one, really. And I hope I'm wrong. I really do. Because I like John Messina and I really like Portsmouth. And I had them higher up the table. I had them at 14th. So te- uh, nine places down, I've got Portsmouth 23rd. I feel like one of the reasons for it is is just confidence as much as anything. They they had a real blow at the start of the season with, with injuries and obviously heart issues with their, their main striker as well. And... I think that started to transfer. They actually had some good results at the start of the season, scraping out draws with some good sides. But, you know, getting absolutely tonked by Stoke. I know they drew their, their last game, but I, I feel like their confidence is completely shot. And with a team like that that doesn't have depth, it can be a slippery slope. And that's my reason for putting them 23rd. Yeah, I, I think Portsmouth are going to turn a corner. They had like a really tough start to the season. But obviously, after the international break, they got like a big six-pointer against QPR. Um, Right now, it's quite lazy. You're just going for the teams currently in the bottom three. At the moment. Um, (laughs) It could be, let's be honest, though. It could be any three from about six or seven towards that bottom three. Um, Yeah, I I just feel lack of depth in their squad is going to come back to bite them. Yeah, We'll talk about Portsmouth where, when uh, you know my, where when we get to the table where I've put them. Uh, so twenty third, I've got Stoke City, and that I I don't really have faith. I just feel there's too much wrong at Stoke behind the scenes. I think maybe John Waters is just you know getting a bit too involved. And it doesn't really come down to whether Pelak is good or bad. It comes down to like the chaos off the pitch, really. And I, I had them, I sort of had them pegged for a bad season before. Like I had them 19th. So that's a drop of four places. I just, they've been circling the championship plug hole for quite a few years now. And I think this could be the season. Yeah, it's close for me as well um, with Stoke. You're right. My only caveat to that is their uh, their strength of squad um, is a lot better than some of the others around them, and that might just pull them out of trouble again. But yeah, I mean, there's every chance with their their setup that they do go down. The squad is ridiculous, and I think Vic Johansson was a great signing, really great signing, but he's... He's he's an old hand when it comes to relegation battles. He's seen enough of them with Rotherham. Yeah, yeah, certainly, um, is, yeah. yeah. But they, they have a great team, and the thing I don't understand is they've made some really good signings. You're right about the depth of squad. Like Sam Gallagher, what a player! Tom Cannon scoring four in one four game. In those game, those yeah. are the only four game goals he scored all season. Uh, I, yes, I know he was a deadline day signing or close to deadline day they got lewis kumas they they got yeah. gibson at the back as well it's it's a very good team so i don't know why this team isn't doing better i just there's something rotten in the state of stoke that's a, a line from some shakespearean play well no it's um what is it it's a there's something rotten in the state of Denmark. It's one of those. Mm. Can't think of the play. Mm-mm. Let us you're know asking, in the comments. You're what play is the that? <laughs> <laughs> if only you were an English it. teacher, you yeah, could have told me. I'm not about to make that point very clear. If I was, that'd probably be disgraceful. Could be. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it is. They they are. There is something wrong with them, though, isn't there? I mean, they've gone through managers like nobody's business. They haven't seemed to work out a formula that works. They seem to have uh, the wrong kind of character of player there as well a lot of the time, uh, which is so at odds to the team that played under Pulis in the Premier League, which was all about fighting and fighting for the team. Um, and it, it can be a slippery slope when you lose that identity. Um, 
So, yeah, I can see it. I can see it. Right. On to 20 seconds. Who do you have there? Yeah, I've got Millwall. Um, I am denied about this one. Um, I actually changed my mind last minute on this one. Um, I'm not convinced with their ability to score enough goals. Um, And I think that, you know, it depends on injuries, of course, but Langstaff, great um, in the league that he was in with Notts County. I, I... relying on him to score goals in that team is going to be difficult. I he's really done all like right, that. though. He's done all right, like, yeah. Two assists, a goal, and, he, you know, he gets into those positions. Yeah. If you're a goal scorer, you're a goal scorer. Well, yeah, but it's a different type of team, isn't it? Um, and I don't think he fits into the Millwall team as well. Uh, you're right, he's done okay. I, For me, I, I just think that they've, they've had some poor results and, and, and they look like they're on a poor run. So I've put Millwall um, in 22nd. It could go either way. I'll talk about my 21st. They, are, they were very close, those ones, those two to choose from. Um, I, I just, again, I think they've got, they've got a couple of really good players. Like I said, Jasper Tanganga is an excellent defender. But overall, their defence has not been what we thought it would be. And that's worrying for me, for a team that don't score that many goals. Yeah. In 22nd, I have QPR. So for me, that's um, down 14 places from my yeah, preseason. It's a lockdown. Uh, it's a big drop. It's a yeah. big drop. And I've actually been quite hot on QPR because I really rate Marty Fuentes. I think he's such a good manager. But there's got to be a reason. Like, I, look, I haven't watched all of, Car- uh, all of QPR's games. But there's got to be a reason they can't buy a win. Right. Like, I've seen... I've seen the game against Luton. And to be honest, that was when I got really hot on them. Because I thought, wow, that was a great turnaround. They showed proper fight there. Like that that fray, what a player. Dembele, what a player. And and you go through their team. They have Jimmy Dunn, Steve Cook, Powell at left back. He's tremendous. Sam Fields, I've always thought Sam Fields is a very tidy midfielder. But they've only got one win this season. Mm. And everyone's Don't beating know it. Everyone's beating them. It's yeah. mad. They seem to go behind, don't they, very uh, very often in games as well and don't tend to recover. I know they did against Luton and they managed to <laughs> grab a draw last second against um, Sheffield Wednesday as well. But, you know, generally speaking, that is not a good recipe for, for getting good, you know, good points on the board is get constantly having to fight back. Um, I think part of the problem there, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be a long, hard season. And, you know, as I was saying about Portsmouth, you know, they they got QPR up next. And that is a big, big, big game for both teams. I, I'd say it's the first six-pointer of the season, really. Yeah, it's it's going to have... I mean, we're at that stage of Portsmouth where they're going to have to start winning games as well. Both of them really are going to have to start showing what they're made of against those sides. Mm-hmm. And into 21st, so I have Portsmouth who you've already placed in your table. So I had them 24th. I thought they Mm. didn't have a chance, but I put them up three places. I think they're just going to be the right side of the dotted line. Big game, though, against QPR, as we were saying. I think their, their start to the season was very tough, but I think they're going to improve now. But who you got in 21st? I've got Stoke, so I said it was a coin flip with Millwall. It really is. I I can't work out, but I think Stoke are going to be there or thereabouts for all the reasons you said. So I, I won't repeat all of it, but yeah, an absolute an absolute dumpster fire behind the scenes as they always seem to be. But they do have a strength of squad that has just convinced me that they're going to stay up. Um, you know, I know too good to, too good to go down is the uh, the classic kiss of death, but I feel like. They might just escape it. No one is too good to go down. No No one is too big to go down. Relegation waits for no man. And by the way, the the quote I said before, that was Hamlet. I just thought about it. Oh, I said it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there we go. Denmark gave it away, didn't it? (laughs) I never read Hamlet. Never did it. Um, Right. 
on to 20th position. Who you got? Yeah, so in 20th, I've got Preston. Um, yeah, they've just not been very good, really. I put them at 18th previously. They've gone down two places. <sighs> yeah, I don't... <laughs> They, they've been poor. Um, I don't know whether Heckenbottom's going to get a, a tune out of them and they're going to need investment over January and they don't tend to get much investment as a team. And for that reason, I don't really see them improving from where they are now. So, yeah, 20th for me. Yeah, I've gone the same. I've also gone 20th. The reason why they don't get investment is because they have Peter Risdale as CEO. Yeah. And living the dream is enough for him. He, he's He's done it once. He doesn't need to live the dream again. So he'll just, um, you know, make sure that what goes in is the same as what comes out. Like net zero. Um, looking at their team, it's such a weird one as well. Because, you know, I rate Emil Rhys Jacobson. He's so good. And uh, Frocky Jensen as well. He's looked a really good player. Um, ben Whiteman in the middle. Pff, he's good. He could play in any championship team and Liam Lindsay he's been so good he's been so good um and I rate Freddie Woodman like the spine of their team is so good but for s some reason they just don't create they they're they're, they're mm. resistant to creating like they are you know it's one one nil 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 one nil, or or they get tanked. You know, Watford turn them over. Oh, no, wait, they beat Watford three nil, which uh, you know, fair play, Preston. That was a great result, mate. Um, <laughs> like yeah, I, I that, just that was the anomaly. They're, yeah. they're a very frustrating team, and I, I had them twelfth because I thought Ryan Lowe. Yeah, he's had a few seasons. It's been steady progress, but now I've had to drop them down eight places. Yeah. I think a lot of the players you mentioned as well, yeah, they they are good. They have been they have been good, but they've plateaued a bit. Well, a bit like Preston have. And like a lot of the players we mentioned for Cardiff as well, they haven't really kicked on for so long. Whether that is just being in a team like Preston, where the ambition and the football under Ryan Lowe, although it got them good results, wasn't you know didn't inspire the the, the fans didn't really back him for those those reasons. So. Whether that's taken it out of the players as well, maybe that's the reason why they're struggling. Um, but yeah, they definitely have the capability of doing better. I just don't see it happening. Mm -hmm. And on to nineteenth, so I have Plymouth, and uh, that I had them twenty second, and I think I said at the time they'll be rock bottom, then Rooney will get sacked, and then they'll sort of try and escape, uh, but fail. And um, fair play, I hold my hands up. I'll eat my humble pie. Rooney has assembled quite a team. <laughs> yeah, there was a load of players when we saw them against Luton that looked really, really promising. Um, and ones we know about as well, of course. Um, and fair play to the owners for keeping hold of Whitaker as well. Let's be honest. I mean, I didn't see that happening. Um but yeah, I, I probably was harder on them than you were. I had them twenty third, so so pretty close. But yeah, he's he's got that style of playing that he wanted to implement at Birmingham. Seemingly, he's got players buying into it, and it and it it, it is paying off. There's obvious flaws in it, like as the first game against Sheffield Wednesday showed. But yeah, he's doing he's doing very well with a, a pretty limited limited budget again with Plymouth. Hmm. So who have you got in nineteenth? So I got QPR. Um, we mentioned it already um, for the same reasons that, again, we said Ciafuentes has done, did brilliantly, did wonders. I really thought they'd be higher up. I had them at 13th in my original table. I really did think that they were going to kick on this season. And I can't quite put my finger on why not as well, because I think they've shown flashes of being brilliant, but just been absolutely dreadful in other moments as well and really naive defending too. Um, so I, I, I'm not sure um, what um, needs to happen there. I think he is a good manager. He's shown it already, um, but they're going to have to reassess the way they set up, especially early on in games to stop conceding those goals, particularly first on. So yeah, QPR for me for that reason, 19th. That's bold going that high with them. On to 18th. Who you got? Sheffield Wednesday. Um, 
they they've been up and down really but they've no not done anywhere near as well as i i thought mind you i only had them at 16th i think you had them a fair bit higher than this now um danny roll we we were both big fans of last season both of us thought that actually he might leave but not 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 downwards because he's been picked up by another top championship club um and he's just they've failed to really kind of get going they've got some great players Barry Bannon's shown that he's still absolutely class at this level um they've got the makings of a great team they made some great signings over the summer as well you know um and I know that they've got some injuries I don't know whether Lowe's back yet um because that will make a big difference for them but yeah I, I mean is it Ugbo their striker hasn't really hit any form and he was scoring goals towards the end of last season so a few things just haven't clicked for them um, I'm not I'm not convinced on this one, but I have to go with the nine games that we've seen. And on that, I can't really put them much higher than 18th. I'm still a big fan of Danny Roll. And uh, we'll yeah. talk about Sheffield Wednesday when I get there. Uh, so I have Derby County in 18th. I, I had them 21st. I thought they were going to struggle. I've got them up three places. I feel they've they've acclimatised to the championship quite well. Mendes Lang is looking good. Uh, Simeon Jackson, he's good as well. Uh, Ibu Adams, like, pfft, wow. Wow. I mean, other than his terrible miss, he's he's been <laughs> an absolutely miss. sensational signing for them. Yeah, he, he really has. has. And, uh, you know, once again, here I am eating some humble pie. Fair play. <laughs> yeah, I think with Derby as well, I think most of it was mainly down to management wasn't it that we just uh, uh, certainly one of my my theories that derby wouldn't do so well um was based on on the idea that you know paul warns only known relegation and <laughs> you've got to go away it's true though he's yeah. been relegated i think every single time he's he's been up there so you know stats tell us otherwise but yeah you're right derby have, have done have done particularly well um i've got uh plymouth in my uh 17th so yeah, we talked about Rooney already. A lot better than we thought that they would do. Uh, I still think their 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 defending is is a problem. They're still conceding quite a lot of chances and from crosses. So that that will probably mean that um, that they're going to struggle at some point, particularly around Christmas when the fixtures all pile up. Especially if they get some more injuries around that area. But yeah, fair play to to Wayne Rooney. I think he's done he's done a much better job than most people, including ourselves, um, thought that he would. Yeah, and in 17th, I had Millwall. So I had them previously 11th, down six places. Not as low as you, though. Like You you, you mm. think Millwall getting yeah. relegated. Um, I It will be a long, hard season, but I think defensively they're going to be strong enough. Neil Harris knows how to set up a team defensively. So I think they will be safe, like comfortably safe. But, you know, agree to disagree on that. Um, so where are you at on 16th? Derby, copy and paste. <laughs> we just talked about them, but they've done brilliantly. Yeah. Um, and I think home form is going to see them through. Um, Pride Park is is a tough place to go at the moment, um, and that's going to keep them safe. I had them 21st, um, so just avoiding the drop um, as well. So, yeah, up, for, uh, up five places to 16th for me. Yeah, I got a Sheffield Wednesday. I, I was channeling the Danny Roll masterclass when I – put them 14th but now i've revised that two places down um i i still think they're all right but again depth will hold them back but you know barry bannon just he shut me up so much with that goal that we saw at kenilworth road it was absolutely ridiculous right on to 15th who have you got yep. uh bristol city i don't yeah. know whether they're a good team or not <laughs> Do you? Are they good? Are they so good? I, or not? I liken Bristol City to you have a car. It's not the greatest car, but they have good players. They, they, they have the capability of going 0 to 60, but I don't know what's wrong with them. Yeah, I think Manny struggled to to really enforce an identity there. Um, I think that's that they can win 3 0 one week and lose 3 0 the next week. It's that inconsistency we talked about it the sort of ghost of lee johnson at bristol city it's just 
is always always seems to be the way regardless they've got a really good squad i think especially going it's forward so they've good got a really good squad yeah they have and they should do a lot better than this but i just cannot pinpoint where to put them i i i was copy and pasting teams around my table and Bristol City had to put in a column all of its own because I just I kept moving them up and down. I have no idea, no idea. So I, I sort of plugged for fifteenth, um, which is by the way another four places lower than I put them before. Because they've got no consistency whatsoever. No, they're so streaky. Like uh, mm. I reckon, like Lee Johnson put a hex on them. Streaky Lee Johnson. <laughs> I had them 13th down two places, but I don't understand how a team of like Anis Mometi, Scott Twine, oh, Jason Scott Knight. Twine. Yeah, there's yeah. Scott Twine. He's yeah. so good, but they're, yeah. they're struggling so hard. They yeah. can't get that consistency. They drew against Cardiff. Uh, they drew against Sheffield Wednesday. They drew against, uh, against yeah. Swansea, but they beat Oxford. Yeah. Uh, I just, like, they, they are so frustrating. And yeah, I I don't know what to do with them. Don't know. No. So confusing. So that's my choice, 15th. <laughs> right, 14th. Uh, yeah, I've got Oxford. Um, so I've got them up from the relegation zone. I put them 22nd in my league table. Eat that um, humble pie. Yeah, well, look, I, I, I think my my view when I put them 22nd is that, that, that they've done very well to get to the playoffs and they've done even better to win the thing. Um, I just thought that they'd probably run out of steam, but they really have been brilliant this season. We we've we have uh, not just in our preview and, and review podcast of the two two with the Luton game, we we've been lauding Oxford since the start of the season, really, and how well they've done, how well Des Buckingham's put that team together and got them playing as a team. Um, I don't know whether um, or how long Brannigan's out for, whether he's likely to be back, um, but they've done. <laughs> He's their talismanic, talismanic player, and and they're not missing him, to cope with him. No, but that's the point. Yeah. That's what I mean. Exactly <laughs> I that, and that says that says everything about them as a team. That they don't, they they absolutely have been excellent. Um, they just need to start picking up some more points away from home, and I think they've been, as you said previously, that they've only lost by the odd goal away from home as well. So, um, and obviously got the draw against Luton. Yeah, they also got a draw against uh, Pompey as well. Yeah. Um, they are organised. They are such a good team. They have fight. They are everything I wish Luton Town were right now. Yeah. And fair play Oxford. But in 14th, you're going to have to wait to hear where I've placed Oxford. You don't have to wait long, though. In 14th, I have Coventry. I had them four. Four. What a fall from oh, grace. Oh, what Down a drop. 10 places. Oh, Absolutely mad. Coventry. What is happening? Mm. Like, Mark Robbins, he has so much credit in the bank because he's been there since League Two. And, like, fair play. I If I were a Cov fan, I'd be giving him credit in the bank as well. Like, I'd say, yeah, Mark Robbins, we're not going to get relegated under you. It's absolutely fine. And, obviously, Ben Sheaf wasn't around for the first few games. Then Ben Sheaf comes in, they win 3-0. So he's changed it around a little bit. Has Hadji Wright been firing? Has he been offside the whole time? Mason Clark's a good player, but, you know, is the system working? Who knows? Who knows? Like Brandon Thomas Asante is looking good, but at the same time, do you fit in Ellis Sims? They have so much talent. How do you fit them all in? But meanwhile, they're defensively they've been a shambles been absolute shambles yeah i mean i'll i'll i've got them slightly higher um but mine's you know sneak preview mine's have dropped as well just not to the same extent mm -hmm. i don't know you, you, you know you, i think cob fans probably a bit split with mark robbins at the moment and i know it's saying you know you'd stick with him etc it depends what the football's like when you're watching it the expectations at coventry are going to be high and look he has got credit in the bank of course objectively we know he's a good manager that's not even in question but there's, there's got to be something going on. There's got to be something wrong. This isn't just a poor start anymore after nine games. But yeah, we'll uh, we'll talk about it when uh, when I talk about uh, where they are mm -hmm. in my table. Yeah, yeah. Thirteenth, I have Oxford. Copy and paste what you said. Mm -hmm. I had them twenty third, up ten places. Love watching Oxford. I think they're tremendous, and 
you know, just wait until Cameron Brannigan comes back into the side. Yeah. Can you imagine if he comes back Can in the side in? and completely unsettles them? Well, you know, strange, <laughs> stranger things have happened, actually. But yeah, no, it will yeah. be yeah. It could be the case. Who have you got in third? Uh, I've got Watford. Um, so uh, I won't be apologising to Watford for obvious reasons. However, I had them at 20th up to 13th. Tom Cleverley's done a good job. Um, and I think that, you know, even though their, their squad is nothing compared to what it was under a, a couple of years ago when they still had the parachute payments and everything else, they've still got some good players in there. Um it looks like losers getting back in the fray as well, and that that will have an impact on them. But yeah, fair play to Cleverly. I think he he flattered to deceive a bit towards the end of last season. I know he got some it was draw, to draw, draw, them. draw, draw, yeah, wasn't it? Exactly, and I thought that that, that was going to go one way, and it's it's gone the other. And you know, he, he's got to take some credit because um, it's not easy. Um, getting any form of stability at that club and you know we know what the Pozzo is like we we know how quick it, they are to pull the trigger on on managers as well and clearly the players are playing for him too I think that's epitomized by them turning it around against Borough on the last game before the international break so yeah they could well do better than this but I can't bring myself to put them higher than 13th so 13th for Watford yeah I have them a little bit higher mm. <laughs> Up to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to be as realistic as possible. Like I thought Suzoko was a very good signing. Yeah. But I'll talk about them a bit later, I guess. 12th, I have Luton Town. So that is, I had them previously down as fifth. That is a drop of seven places. Um, I keep saying and we'll say this in the match preview before the Watford game, it's always starting from now. And obviously there were the rumours going around, like Rob Edwards has resigned. Um, obviously we didn't get involved with that on, on social media, although some did. And I I feel Rob has to see it as this is when it's got to start, you know, like go back to basics as Reese Burke said, like it's all open to interpretation. I think Reese Burke was talking to Rob, you know, stop this tippy tappy football that isn't working. Just go back to basics. It's <laughs> got to tippy tappy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not tippy tappy. It's t- no. tippy lose the ballie. It's awful. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, yeah. I, I've got us slightly higher, but uh, on the basis that, you know, the, the squad that we've got, and a bit the same principle as I've got Coventry higher is that something will change. Um, whatever that is, something has to change. So that's my only reasoning. Um, you can call it blind optimism or false hope if you like. But I think mm. I think with, with a club like Loon and Coventry, something has to give sooner rather than later, probably. Whatever that is, I'm not talking about any particular personnel changes, but something has to change. For both of these teams, expectations are really high. Now, tell us yeah. who's 12th for you. Uh, yeah, so I've got Blackburn. So here we go. This is the <laughs> apology. I've mentioned it already at the start of this. So 12 places increased. They've been brilliant. Um, Eat and, that humble yeah, pie. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I think I got, you know, I, I got maybe taken in slightly by all the Venki stuff off the field, you know, playing court cases and, and mm-hmm. you know how these things can often go behind the scenes collapses. I had a feeling that, that you know, they might sell off and end up being in receivership and, uh, in, in, um, and as a result, uh, do a sort of Wigan. Basically, that was my thought process more than anything. Selling assets left, right and centre. That hasn't happened. Um, there was even a chance they would keep hold of Smodics, I think. But um, yeah, I think they've done brilliantly well. They've got, they've still got their, their, you know, most of their best players there and they've done really well. They're scoring goals for fun um, as well. Um, a lot of players playing, playing really well for them. So absolutely, yeah. Hold my hands up. Got that one totally wrong. As things stand, of course, nine games in, but as things stand, Blackburn have been the standout improved, you know, difference in mine, I think. Yeah, so I have them 11th. Um, so I had them 16th. That's up five places. Obviously, I didn't have them as low as you. Yeah. Copy and paste for that. Dolan, while player, yeah. you know, speaking as a Luton fan, I wish Luton had signed him. 
Um, I don't know why we dilly dallied over that. Wyman still rolling back the years of 34. Ohashi looks a great player. Oh, I think he's out so for a couple good. of weeks, yeah, though. But Ryan Hedges and uh, Travis as well. They're, they're the makings of a good team. They really do. Hmm. Um, fair play, Blackburn. Prove us all wrong. Who you got in the Lilith? Us, Luton. Um, so Wait. not far different. Yeah. Again, said the same thing. I've already said it. I think something has to... Ha- on the basis of hope that that something has to change, you're not going to let sleepwalk into hopefully a relegation battle, which is you know we're down down there at the moment. I can't see either Coventry or Luton being down there at the end of the season, even objectively. I struggle to see that happening, um, but things have got to happen for that to, to to be the case. You know, it's sad really nine games in that we're being optimistic about putting Luton eleventh or or thirteenth, really, isn't it? But I think that both of us believe that this could be the case at the start of the season, and both of us put Luton in the playoffs. It optimistic, wildly optimistic. It was we optimistic. It. Well, it was optimistic, and it wasn't. I mean, for me, I still think that we have one of the best squads in the league. So it was based on that. However, we both saw the type of football that we were playing towards the back end of the Premier League, and were worried it was going to continue. And everything in pre-season pointed towards that, and it has happened. So, for that reason, I think more than anything. Um, it was so something has to change tactically formations or or if it doesn't then you know the board have got a decision to make haven't they so mm-hmm. for me yeah Luton 11th yeah into 10th you got Swansea um, again another team who have improved who have actually ha- had a really good team um, it was just a bit more of an unknown on how they would play I had them in 19th I think they've done really well they look really solid and also dangerous going forward have picked up some excellent results as well um, they've been difficult for every team and um, they've got some good results against the likes of Coventry for example towards the end and they yeah they they look a really good team, solid team in the middle. They've still got some great players, um, and yeah, recruited well in the summer too. Yeah, I think they're going to finish quite. High. I had them. I think they're going to be one of those teams that are going to be in and around the playoffs until the end, and it's going to be tight as it always is in the championship. So I think they'll be tenth maybe, but they might only be three points off sixth. Yeah, Something I've also like got Swansea tenth as well previously 18th though up eight places yeah they look they play a system where they, they got ronald and they got eon mm. and you know straight up and down and this fella's the potnik as well top big tank you know he looks decent and matt grimes he still does the job you know he's good and i'm a big fan of Lawrence vigoro as well i'm happy he didn't just decide to be fourth choice at Burnley. He's actually gone to play football. And they surprised me because their team is just so good. And there's, you know, they, they get really good results. Like the 1 0 against Norwich really stands out. And, you know, obviously they had a bit of a tough one. You know, they lost to Sheffield United. That could have been a bit more of a battering, but Sheffield United looked decent. We'll talk about them later. And then, you know, mm-hmm. draw against Stoke. But, yeah, I agree with you. They could be in and around the playoffs. Yeah. Right, ninth place, I have Hull. <laughs> so I just up one place for me. Um, again, great signings. Bit inconsistent, hit or miss, you know. Um, I do think it was odd getting rid of Leroy Rossini, but I think, you know, they are going to miss out on playoffs again, regardless of how much they've splashed in the cash department. Yeah. Well, snap, I've got Hull as well. So I think they're going to miss out too. Um, And I think, well, they did splash out. They needed to, didn't they? They lost so many players. Mm. Um, And their last game, they got absolutely tonked. So um, by a very informed Norwich side who have really turned it around and we'll talk about them later, but they they do have a good side. They've got some good players. Um, some of them that, that Luton players know directly, or maybe even indirectly, um, certain midfielder that was linked with us for what feels like two seasons. Um, and, you know, people like Drame, Giles, etc. good players. We know how good they can be, um, particularly as wing-backs. Um, they've got a good side, but as you say, a bit like Bristol, inconsistent i just think they've got a better side so yeah in and amongst it ninth for me too 
Right. Eighth position, I have Watford. Uh, pretty much echoing what you said earlier. I do think they have a good starting 11, maybe depth. They've they've lost a lot of the stars, but they've yeah. still got Ken Semmer. <laughs> they lost to Spreer. Loser, I don't know if he is the same player that he was. I feel like he's lost his edge since he had, like I think it was a leg break. And mm. I think maybe he pulls out of challenges now. But I think that, you know, considering they're sick for the moment, I do think they'll still be in and around the playoff picture. And for me, I said that the one success from this season is Luton finishing above Watford. Uh, I just don't see how it's going to happen the way we're currently going. Who have you got in eighth? Uh, yeah, I've got Coventry. So for the reasons that we've spoken wow. about, yeah, I, I, I can't write off any elements of their team. Um, at all that you know for the for what we said I just think people like Hadji Wright and Ellis Sims have got to start scoring soon um, and, and really uh, they showed it with that 3-0 I think everyone thought that was that was going to be the the turnaround particularly with such a convincing win as well but yeah they just haven't backed it up and I don't know whether Mark Robbins is um you know, tired or, or he's just, he feels like he's not been backed, although he must have, he has been backed. You know, they've got, he's been backed. Yeah, he has. They, they, they've you know. spent a lot of money and they, they've, they've kept Ben Sheath. Yeah, they've done massive. Really. They have spent money, you're right. Um, I thought Thomas Asante was a really good signing as a backup as well, who I assume would be a backup the way mm. that people like Ellis Sims was playing, although, you know, interchangeable. They've got a very strong lineup going forward. But just like I said for Luton, I feel like something does have to change. The expectation is there. So either it's Mark Robin changing things or, or eventually then it, it's they're going to have, I, I think they'll part ways. I don't think that, I know you said to Coventry fans, I know you didn't necessarily mean they'd be happy with just staying in the league, but I think I think the owners and the fans probably now expect them to be, as rightly, challenging towards the top of the table. And if they're not, you know, in that critical period around Christmas, I think that then he's, he's going to, he might have to go. Um, it'd be very sad, as we know how brilliant he is. But we'll mm. see. Hopefully he turns it round and, and, and that's why I've got them as, as eighth in that, in that playoff battle. Yeah. And into a bit more of the playoff battle. I feel we're going to have very similar top sevens mm. here. Um, yeah. But it might be a bit different. So in seventh, I have Middlesbrough. And I feel they're going to miss out because they're just not... They're not converting their chances. No. I had them sixth. I've got them down one place. <laughs> Snap. I have them seventh. Yeah. I had them seventh before, so they've stayed the same for me. And for the same reason. But, you know... They have been really unlucky in games, um, but they're not taking their chances and they're giving away silly goals at the same time. And they're, they're drawing games they should win. They're losing games they should draw. They haven't seemed to have got that steel to make sure that they see out results and, and everything else as well. We know they're a great side, but you know I think that Carrick is is streaky. We we know that. And, and he is a very much a confidence-based manager. Whenever they're doing well, they seem completely unbeatable. And then they go through periods where they couldn't buy a win. It's, again, for that reason, exactly the same as you. I've, I've got them just missing out. Right. And into the playoffs. I've got West Brom in sixth. Uh, so I have them up one place from seventh. Are you, are you as... Uh you know, hot on West Brom as you were. Before. Well, we'll see, won't we? <laughs> <laughs> we will see. I we just assumed see. you had them in the same place. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I, 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 I do think squad depth will be an issue here. I do think they will be in the playoffs. I rate Carlos Corbran so much. And essentially from my, the, the way I was thinking at the beginning of the season, like, it's a fire cell, you know, that Tobias Bunke mm. thing. Um, like Josh Maj has just been ridiculous and they haven't even really needed Jed Wallace. No, they should have let him go, plays. but Josh Maj, they just keep putting it on a plate for him. He gets the tap ins. It's amazing how he's rejuvenated. Uh, who have you got in sixth? 
Uh, yeah, so I've got Sunderland in sixth. Um, I don't know. If, I don't think Sunderland fans can be too happy with this, despite the fact that they've actually gone up three places. I imagine most <laughs> Sunderland fans will probably want them to be higher or would be higher in their predictions. Um, they finish a place above Middlesbrough, though, so you know that that's one thing. Um, I've got them sixth for the reasons I've spoken about already. Um, they've done excellently. They've probably been the most entertaining team to watch for me in consistently in the Championship. They've been brilliant. Um, particularly at home, Stadium Light's been an amazing place and just watching some of the atmosphere there too as well. Um, they, what an excellent goal they got uh, to equalise against Leeds. Great bit of skill that was as well. <clears throat> goal, goal of no the help season. at all. <laughs> goal of the season. But, but, but yeah, I mean, but, you know, I think, look, I, I think for me, the lack of experience that runs throughout their side and their manager is going to tell um and it means that they'll finish the playoffs i still give them a decent shot by the way if they, you know i think they'll finish playoffs and i think they'll still have a decent shot of going up through them um but i just don't think that they've got the experience they need to finish in the automatic places or even towards the, that that you know, third or fourth well sunderland fans are going to think i'm buttering them up <laughs> In fifth place, I'm not going to be talking about Sunderland. I'm going to be talking about Burnley. I think it's a very different Burnley side. Um, you know, they, they've been hard to score against, but I just feel the quality of teams at the top ends of the championship. I feel Burnley might, you know, drop off a bit. And I think... When I was doing these, I saw that Lyle Foster picked up an injury on international duty, and that that's something you never mm. really want to see as a Burnley fan. So I don't know how serious it is, but I do think, you know, injuries and losing certain players like Odebert is a big one. Like if they lose Cody Osho, that's also a big one because obviously Osho, Cody Osho was out for a significant period of last season as well. You know, it could be the playoffs for them, but I had them third, so they're down two places there. Who you got in fifth? Interesting. I'll talk about Burnley later. Um, <laughs> fifth, I've got West Brom, so I, I have dropped them down, mm. uh, which I think that considering, you know, we did the predictions just as that news was coming out, didn't we, about um, the spending plan. They lost, I think, Thomas Asante on that day as well. So, yeah, I'd made the prediction I stuck by it based on Carlos Corbran. And let's be fair, they've been excellent at the start of the season. They dropped off a little bit in the last couple of games. But, you know, they have got good players. But as you said, same thing, really. It's just going to be it's going to be a test with their depth of, of squad, um, you know, against some of the better sides as well. I, I think I think they'll be... I think they're 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 going to be playoffs and they're going to be really difficult to beat in the playoffs because Carlos Corbran you know, would have won the playoffs if it wasn't for some dodgy decisions. So, you know, really, you could argue, you could argue, Huddersfield fans certainly would argue that that he deserves a lot of credit for how he went about that. You know, he completely nullified Luton over two legs. We had a lot of injuries, but still. Um, and for me, outplayed and, and, and out-tacticed Steve Cooper at Forest as well. So I think they'll be tough. They'll be tough to beat, but I've got them fifth. Yeah. It's a very tough top of the yeah. league. It really is. And in fourth place, here I go, eating my words, up 13 places Ooh. from 17th. I have Sunderland in fourth. And 17th. I will eat my words. <laughs> I'll eat them happily. I even did a video on the channel um, saying, will Sunderland run out of steam? Look, I don't think they're going to finish first i don't think they're gonna finish second they are gonna drop off the same things you said they do have a young squad yes they have some experience in there with metham and uh jack clark i think it's jack clark i forget which one which winger clark's clark's the one that went to it switch isn't he there you go jack it's not clark. jack clark then it's the other one <laughs> the other one that's a bit older um who's done the rounds been at celtic and those everywhere he's been everywhere the name escapes me at the moment it'll come to me probably when i'm like closing my eyes to go to sleep at night um they do have experience in there like with you know 
goal of the season scorer Alan Brown as well. Like they have experience, but ultimately it's a very young team. And when I say they will run out of steam, I mean there will be clever teams like an Oxford that just fight and you know bully them and that will happen you know Luke O'Neill loves being in a bully battle but at the same time you know when big old Mark Harris comes over and bowls you over you can't jump on his back and give him a kiss on the cheek or whatever Luke O'Neill does I still think it's a very good season for a young squad finishing yeah. fourth like fair play if they manage to pull that off who have you got in fourth? Norwich. So I've actually kept them in the same place I did in my preview before, and it looked like that was going to be uh, miles off at the start of the season, didn't it? Um, rocked by uh, Gabriel Sara going and then just couldn't buy a goal for for a while. It just didn't look like they were they had any identity whatsoever. But now he's got them playing some really attacking football. They're scoring goals for fun. Mm. Um, the only team to really keep them to, to a, a minimum scoring was Leeds. Um one four nil, I think, in their last game, didn't they? So they have been absolutely uh, excellent going forward, scary um, good going forward, um, and getting the most out of the players they've got. Josh Sargent, we know what quality he's got. Um, <clears throat> and, yeah, I think they're going to keep going with it as well. I think they, they've, they've underperformed. They've sort of gone under the radar a bit about underperforming. I don't think with, with Ipswich fans very much. I think they, they made a bit good point of it. But but they have. I mean, how poor poorly they they did um, last season in the, in the playoffs. They just, you know, for a team of that quality should be doing or should be given a better account of themselves, I think, um, in those games. And, yeah, I think they'll, they'll do well and finish fourth. Yeah, I've got them third, so I had them ninth yeah. up six places because, yeah, as you said, I thought, hmm, Gabriel Sara is going to be a big loss. Borja signs, though. <sighs> Josh mm. Sargent as well, like, provided yeah. they stay injury-free. They've scored 12 goals in their last four games. Mad. Yeah, yeah it's, exactly. It's crazy. Mm. Absolutely crazy. Like, fair play Norwich, and, uh, you know, th- they'll keep going. Um, who have you got third? Now, this is another coin flip as well, a bit like the relegation mm. battle, but I've gone Sheffield United third, but it's going to be close. Now, the reason that I have is because I worry about their depth up front. Um, and, you know, let's take Saturday if we have to talk about it again. Um, <laughs> you know, they won that game 2-0, Um should have been right, eight but, but Burnley would have won it four or five. That, mm-hmm. That's my feeling. Uh, Leeds would have won it by about ten, um, <laughs> and 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 I think that that's the problem. No, I'm not having it. Sheffield they, United they won it cruising second gear. We never looked a threat. Luton. Um, so uh, and look, we we were both a bit down on Chris Wilder. I would say that I I, I know quite a few Sheffield United fans, and and they they felt the same way about Chris Wilder that they're not they weren't sure either. So, you know, I think there are plenty of Sheffield United fans in comments going, "Oh, look, we told you so." There were plenty of Sheffield United fans who felt the same way about this. Um, you know, and but he's done brilliantly. He's taken a team that was shipping goals for fun, and he's got them to be the tightest team in the back. They conceded three goals, I think, all season. Three I might goals, be yeah, yeah, haven't three scored goals many though. They haven't scored many, but if you're conceding three goals in nine games in, out of a team that was shipping five or six every week, you know, slight exaggeration, but not much. Um, they, they've done. He's done a brilliant job, and and fair play to to Chris Wilder for doing that because not only has he turned that team around defensively, he's got a you know, a whole new squad together playing a, a a very cohesive brand of football very quickly as well. They've lost a hell of a lot. They lost a hell of a lot of players. They've got a lot of new players in. They're all very good. You know, we all rate people like Harrison Burrows, and but he's he's got them. He's got them playing a great great brand of football, and they won comfortably um, against Luton without their two best players, arguably on the pitch. So. Yeah. yeah, third, but just for me. <laughs> Into second. I won't be talking about Sheffield United yet. I'll be talking about Leeds. I had them first, so they're down one place. And this is a coin flip based on what I think Sheffield United are about. Because um, I feel the goals are going to come for Sheffield United. I really do. Um, but Leeds as well, 
they are scary <laughs> going yeah. forward. So scary. Um, but could they be doing a bit better? Well, yes and no. You know, they, they've conceded seven and nine. It's not as tight at the back as Burnley or Sheffield United or even West Brom. Um, but they're, they're scoring. You know, only Norwich and Sunderland have scored more than them and Blackburn have scored the same amount of them as well. Mm. They, they need to show more. You know, considering that they are the great leads, they have Willie Noto, they have some ridiculous talent in that team. So, yeah, yeah. second for me. Yeah, and Piro's uh, back, sort of back in the goals a little bit, isn't he? So, yeah, they, they are an imperious team. Um, yeah, second for me is Burnley. Um, so, I, there are quite a lot actually. So, I had them in sixth. I'm not convinced by Scott Parker, or, or I say I wasn't convinced by Scott Parker. I'm, I wouldn't say I'm completely converted, but mm-hmm. he does know how to get out of this league, you know, the, the evidence there. And they've got, I mean, Kaliesho for me is my favourite player in the championship. For me, he can do things that n- no other winger forward can do in this league and should be playing arguably in the top half of the Premier League for me. He's mm-hmm. that good. I don't think so he should direct. be in the spot. He's amazing. an amazing player. Amazing player. He can finish. And I think that's the thing that separates the, the best is that he's got that end product as well. If he stays fit, uh, they're going to be there or thereabouts. I think uh, Sarmiento was an excellent um, signing on loan from Brighton as well. He did brilliantly for Ipswich last season as well. And they've still got people like Brownhill in the middle of the park. So uh, for me... Yes, they've had a two, a, a couple of uh, poorer results, um, but you know we know that Oxford aren't a pushover, um, and I think that they will have to grind out a few. But the bit, the reason why I put them ahead of Sheffield United is they, for me, have got more going up front. They can win games by a lot more. Um, and I think once they get going, they a bit like with Leeds, really. I think they can they can you know score five or six in a game no problem so Burnley second for me so the reason why I've gone for Sheffield United first that's up one place from second is because I think defense wins championships and I think with Anel Ahmed Hodzic and Harry Suter they have a ridiculous defense no one's getting past that no one and Mm. That that's why I've, I've had to back Sheffield United, and I made a whole video about it. That you know, if you're watching this, you can watch it on our channel. It's called "Will Sheffield United Walk the League?" Like that might be a bit of an exaggeration. They're going to have to work for it, but <laughs> pretty much to retread that game against Luton, I, I would say they didn't even get out of first gear. To be honest, yeah, no arguments here. <laughs> yeah, so I All think right. Sheffield United first. Who tops your table? Well, it's Leeds still. Um, yeah. I think look, I think a lot gets made of Leeds are going to bottle it. And look, lo- lots of us would find that mildly amusing as well. I think Leeds fans know that. Um, I think so So much of it is kind of, yeah, they're going to bottle the league. They're going to bottle the league. But it's hard to see past that that team as well. Um, they have got, I think Ethan Ampity's out, isn't he? I don't know how for long, a long he's out time. for, but that's, that is a bit, that is a blow because for me, you were talking about defensive players. He is, he is incredible. Um, but, you know, people like Nonto, as you said, Joseph, people like that in their team, they are just so good. Um I can't I can't see past them. And again, you know, their poorer results tend to be the odd draw. They don't lose games. So while we're talking about Sheffield United not losing games, Le- Leeds don't lose games. Yes, they lost against Burnley, but my God, they should not have lost. Burnley had, what, 23, 24% possession and scored with the one attack they had. Great goal, Kolyosho. I mentioned him already, mm-hmm. but my God, they really should have at least equalised in that game. So... Ah. I still have them first. I still think they're going to do do fine. But if they do go on a losing streak and bottle it, um, then, you know, lots of people, apart from Leeds fans, will find it very amusing. Uh, but I think they yeah. will. I think they will still be up there for me. Yeah, as I said, coin flip between first and second. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just favouring Sheffield United at the moment. But those were our updated 
24 to first predictions. What do you think about this season in the championship? Let us know if you've changed your mind about where you think each team will finish. Are you happy with what we said about your teams? Let us know in the comments. And as always, if you like championship content, please like this video and subscribe for even more championship content. And whoever you support, have a good rest of the international break and have a good week.